What's going on Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to another Biomutant video today as we take a look in depth at the weapons and the crafting and pretty much how you're going to be able to make over 2 million combinations out of all of the items into some badass weaponry in this amazing open world kung fu combat game. So make sure you like it, make sure you're subscribed as we go through some brand new infos that will give you all the details on what you can make and what you can craft. Let's go! So we've already seen some of the melee weapons and how the crafting system will kind of work from last year. Now some things have changed including the UI and it's much clearer in the latest footage that Game Informer have been sharing around. They got a chance to take a look at your hands off demo so it's not actually them recording or their gameplay it's just been shared to them at a media event. Now I'm not going to rip them off, you can go and watch the full video for yourselves and I've got a nice video talking about character creation. But what was there was a proper detailed look at this. So I've paused it all, I've got all the info, I'm going to go through it now. So as I said, the footage from last year shows some of the melee stuff that you can do. And you basically start with a handle and then you can modify it so much that you could even make a weapon out of a toothbrush. Now some of this has definitely changed including the crafting costs but it still shows off a good example of the melee that you can make pretty much putting different types of blades, grips as well as kind of fortifications on that melee weapon. But this latest brand new footage shows off the crafting of your actual weapons and it gives us a distinct picture now. It looks like there's going to be 5 crafting costs associated with making any of your weapons. Now this is a change from last year when there were 6 crafting costs associated and it does look like they've changed some of the crafting costs. It looks like ceramics have been removed as well as meteors replaced by chips. Now the 5 as far as I can tell here are on show clink which is pretty much metal or cogs, then you've got wood which is planks, then you've got plastic which is now poly M and then we've got rubber and then we've got something that looks very different from what was reported last year. As said I think these are computer chips now. Also a note that I'm still trying to find out, from last year it said that you needed certain strength to use some of these weapons once you made them or crafted them, or you needed a certain skill, but it looks like they may have removed some of them penalties or restrictions, judging by the new footage we've seen. And it's looked like in that you'll find a maybe shotgun or a rifle or a handgun or a revolver and that begins your starting point. After that, that's when you can start upgrading stuff like putting brand new grips, muzzles, sights, magazines to literally make a huge different amount of combinations with every weapon. Now again, in previous interviews by Stefan Lundqvist, the creator, he said that you'd be able to craft weapons whenever you want. The only reason you're going to be going to NPCs is to get upgrades. So again, we don't 100% know if that's changed, but from the hands-on impressions I've seen a lot of outlets say now, it does look like you will be visiting these NPCs more to craft some of these weapons. Now notice there isn't any kind of durability markers or stats on any of these weapons. Maybe it's because they've just been crafted, I'm not 100% sure. But Stefan in the past has said he didn't want durability on weapons. Once you've got them, you won't need to go and actually repair them. Again, we don't know if that's 100% changed just yet. So let's start going through it then. We've got our base item, a shotgun. These will come in different rarities. They'll either be spectacular or legendary or you might find uncommon. And this is what gives you your baseline stats. You've then got the quality of that item as well. And this ranges in all sorts of different wordings with lots of different numbers. So you may find Rick Rack 2, Rick Rack 4, Rick Rack 7. And then we've got the material. And again, the material can be made out of all sorts of things. I've seen in other examples for armor pieces that the material is made out of cloth. Some of it is made out of this, rock coated. So I'm sure a lot of this stuff is going to contribute to the overall stats of your base part. So we can then start to put some of our stocks on it. You can see they range between cloth stock, long stock, rock stock. And you can see there's some numbers next to them and this appears to be the kind of damage multiplier that you're going to be doing with them. It looks like stocks will greatly increase your range. They'll also help with armor piercing and a small percentage for critical chance. We've then got what they call top mods, which is your sights. Now obviously some weapons might not need sights and so I'm guessing you can get different kind of variables of these. But in the little clip here we see we've got things like wide eye, eye shot lens, accordion optic as well as an x-ray scope too. And again these affect your critical chance slightly, your armor pierce but mostly your range. So it's easy to see that when you swap out different types of components whether or not it's the scope that's going to increase the overall quality of the weapon to get it from being maybe a no star to a three star weapon. This is going to have an impact on the crafting cost as well, so obviously the more expensive or exotic items you're using, the bigger the crafting cost is going to be. 
So we've seen from the combat trailer that you can highlight an enemy's bone structure using some sort of x-ray modification and it looks like on ranged assault rifles that might be the scope. Now let's start taking a look at some of the others like the magazine. Now this may sound like pretty basic stuff if you're a big fan of FPS and shooters but I really think this is a system that is so versatile and clearly a love born out of them types of games to being able to just use different types of weapons and customise it however you want. But the usual kind of things here, drum magazines, large box magazines, extended clips, although we have seen some evidence of kind of bi-mutant vials, it does look like these are going to be the way that you do lots of elemental damage with certain things, but that will be ammo that you can kind of craft instead of it just being an actual piece for the actual weapon itself. Captain obvious here, but of course it increases your magazine size for your bullets, but it does also increase other stats like your arm pierce too, and some of them can increase your critical chance as well. But it does look like the biggest change to your weapon is your muzzle. The different types, really wacky, really weird, like the Rapstar, the Spewbore, the Sklump, the Ejector. These are what's going to affect the armor piercing, the range, much more than any of the other components. If you get a super, super nice, rare or exotic muzzle, then you're going to do extra, extra damage with your weapon. So when you look at your gun, particularly the shotgun, you cannot change the accuracy, you can't change the fire rate of it, but you can change the range, the critical chance and the armor pierce. You'll notice underneath as well it says speeded, this looks like it only applies to certain types of base component gun. A kill with this gun immediately reloads its magazine and that might be something only specifically for that shotgun or that kind of rarity level. So now you can see we've actually made a three and a half star gun. Now one of the reasons I decided to cover this in such detail was because the Game Informer crew didn't really offer much on top of the commentary. They were kind of just meandering and chatting about how cool or exciting the game looks and really didn't go into any details about some of the stuff that was really on show. So I'm really hoping Biomutant released that footage for everyone to be able to use more conducively. They'll usually put it up on their YouTube channel and then I can deep dive into this and show you some actual gameplay properly instead of screenshots or really slow down coverage. Once your gun is ready, then you've got the overall crafting costs and you can see it can be pretty expensive when you start mounting up some of these rarer or more expensive uh, mods. But it does look like you can dismantle these weapons at any time. There doesn't appear to be any kind of cost involved or penalty for doing so. So you may be able to take some of these and put them onto different guns and mix and match it whenever you want. I'm still trying to confirm that 100% but you can also see that you can scrap certain items or certain builds so if you're not happy with this at all you can scrap it all and start over again. Or you can click randomize and let the game do it for you to see if it can come up with something pretty cool. I really love this unique style of crafting and I'm just hopeful we can do it anywhere we want rather than just going back to NPCs to always do it. So yeah, obviously with the melee stuff, I don't want to delve too much into it because this is really old footage and as I said, so much seems to have changed already. But you kind of get the idea. You're going to have your base weapon, whatever it might be, a, a handle of some sort, and then you apply different types of blades to it, different types of extra grips or extra functions, and that is all just going to give you that crafting cost. So yeah, really cool stuff. I can't wait to get my hands on this game properly to show you a proper in-depth guide. The last things you need to note is that there are five loadouts that you can choose on the fly by the looks of things. So you'll be able to swap out and switch in whenever you want and that's really cool as well. So you could have these weapons already stored maybe and then go for something more long range. Go for something that's going to have more elemental attacks on it. And it looks like you'll be using the left D-pad for your guns and right D-pad for your melee weapons. Now there's still a few questions we need to find out the answers for. Is the weapons going to use elemental damage based on the biomutant vials that you're using, which will change it up from fire to ice to toxin? Or is that already preset by the base part that you use? In the footage immediately after crafting this new gun, you can see there's lots of white numbers dashing up and there is a fire elemental damage there as well on the enemy. But I do believe that just shows that he's more susceptible to that type of attack and there wasn't any numbers jumping up on the screen that really showed your weapon was doing any type of elemental damage. But earlier in the hands off demo you can clearly see you're doing additional damage with some sort of element type and this has happened in other parts of the footage with flame type 2 and ice. So maybe that gun just didn't actually have any elemental kind of damage added onto it. It didn't look like anything kind of said it did during the crafting process. So yeah, maybe need to look out for specific types that will give you that or it will be them vials. 
Another reason I do believe it's going to be Biomutant Vials is because on this screen in fighting in that same video you can clearly see that the bullets are purple coloured and that is obviously one of the element damage types. Whereas in all the other screenshots it's white. So yeah, hopefully it'll be easy to point out how to get some of these types and give you kind of badass weaponry to take on any kind of enemy. And when it comes to finding this stuff, it looks like you'll find lots of armaments and consumables in certain chests or, you know, drawers like this where I found the cat metal helmet and it's a legendary item. You can see the rarity is 60 and it's got quality which is decent and the material was made out of aluminum. I'm going to go over the armor pieces, but that's going to be a separate video. But just give you an idea of maybe how you'll find certain parts or gun parts, or maybe you'll be directly be able to buy some of these. Now we know that you can get your character level 100 in skill points and we know that there's certain things that you need to spend by mutant points on which you're going to find. So it does look like the crafting option is really about what you can scavenge and resources you can get and necessarily not worrying about RNG as much. And then I guess the last thing we've got to mention is the NPCs. It's gone on record and said that there are crafting benches in the game or special workbenches or weapon benches that these NPCs will be near or around and they can also give you some sort of upgrades for them too. So maybe that's how we get the upgrades to make some of our weapons more element based etc. And there we go, I can only work with what I've got and this is the footage that I can kind of just about show you guys and dive in a little bit more than what Game Informer did. But absolutely still go and check out that video, I'll leave it in the comments for you to digest yourself and expect lots more videos from me covering some of the new footage and the info we've learned as more press outlets start revealing their little interviews or their time with seeing the game. Biomutant is really shaping up to be something special and I'm going to be there all the way. Guides, tutorial and gameplay, make sure you're locked on for my channel and I'll see you rat bags soon.